But what about nicotine, like the nicotine gum? What about vaping, which has become very popular? Are these things going to increase the risk of erectile dysfunction? Do these things mess with future hard odds? I want to get into that evidence with this video. So I think most of us by now know that smoking cigarettes, tobacco use is not good at all for future hard odds. And if you didn't know, now you know. We have a mountain of scientific evidence showing that smoking increases arterial sclerosis, that's hardening of the arteries, and hard arteries don't get hard odds, and therefore is an independent risk factor for erectile dysfunction. Not only that, smoking actually hampers with and inhibits a critical molecule in the erection pathway, that is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide leads to the relaxation of muscles in the arteries and relaxed arteries fill up with blood. Smoking hampers all of this. But what about nicotine, like the nicotine gum? What about vaping, which has become very popular? Are these things going to increase the risk of erectile dysfunction? Do these things mess with future hard odds? I want to get into that evidence with this video. So a double-blind randomized crossover study asked the question, does nicotine itself, like a nicotine gum, affect erections? Now, the design of this study was randomized. That means took a bunch of people and randomly put them in either nicotine group or placebo group. It was double-blinded. That means that the participants and the researcher involved in the study, neither of them knew who was getting what, meaning they didn't know if they were getting the nicotine gum or the placebo gum. And it was crossover. That means halfway during the study, the experimental group and the control group switched spots and they now got the opposite thing. So if I started off getting the placebo, I then switched to getting the nicotine. Again, throughout the whole study, I didn't know what I was getting and the person giving me the gum, recording my responses, didn't know what I was getting. This design of being randomized, double-blinded and crossover helps to strengthen the findings of the study by eliminating bias and allowing researchers to compare individuals to themselves because of the crossover. So it was a small study. It included 22 healthy nicotine naive heterosexual men and participants were given either placebo gum or nicotine gum. So the researchers, again, wanted to find out what the immediate effects of nicotine gum exposure would be. They were able to recruit 22 nicotine naive, that means who are non-smokers, heterosexual men, to participate. 22 isn't a large number, but the design of this study helps to support the results. So the participants were given either placebo gum or nicotine gum. And then 30 minutes later, they were exposed to erotic film and several parameters were measured, including change in penile circumference. This was done scientifically using something called a plethysmograph, which records the change in penile circumference. They also conducted questionnaires on each participant and asked them about their experience. So what did they find? They found that nicotine ingestion resulted in lower penile erection. Nicotine gum significantly reduced erectile responses to erotic films, corresponding to a 23% reduction in physiological sexual arousal as measured by the penis circumference change on the plethysmograph and the self-reported sexual responses to the erotic stimuli. So participants just didn't get as hard both objectively and subjectively immediately after being exposed to nicotine gum. Okay, so what about vaping or e-cigarettes? We've seen the rise of vaping exponentially over the last decade. Well, unfortunately, vaping or e-cigarettes has been linked to a 2.4 increased risk of erectile dysfunction. And that's regardless of age, heart disease, or other risk factors. Now, if you don't believe me, I put the references below in the notes. There you have it. Nicotine, vaping, smoking, all bad for future hard odds.
but I have good news. The good news for smokers and vapors is that evidence has shown that stopping smoking can improve penile blood flow. The Urology Journal looked at 20 active smokers who smoked 20 to 40 cigs per day and had erectile dysfunction. They did a penile Doppler to look at blood flow before and 24 to 36 hours after stopping smoking. And the Dopplers after stopping smoking showed significant improvement in end diastolic velocity, a measure of blood flow used in penile Dopplers. For instance, only 5% of participants had normal end diastolic velocity before they stopped smoking, and 85% had normal end diastolic velocity within 36 hours of stopping smoking. Also, peak systolic velocity improved. 50% of the participants before stopping smoking had normal peak systolic velocity, and 100% of them had normal peak systolic velocity within 36 hours of stopping smoking. So I'm hoping this encourages you to put the cigarettes down, stop the vaping, and protect and restore future hard-ons. Let me know what you think. I love reading your comments. Comment below. Make sure you tell a friend. Tell them to tell a friend too. And make sure all of you subscribe so you can get all that down there education right here.